Hi, Nusha. I can't hear you. I think you have to select the mic and the headphones on the Zoom. Hey, hi, sorry, never used Zoom. It's first time. <laughs> ah, okay. Welcome to yeah. Zoom reality. Thank you. Yes, thank you. How are you? Good. All good. I mean, it's weird to say that you're good in this weird time. No? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It could be better. I'm fine, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, up and down. It's like some days I feel I, I have more time in my hands now. But at the same time, I miss being out and missing to, you know, hug friends and see friends because here in Iran, we are, you know, our life is at home and meeting each other, you know, small gatherings. And so I'm missing, and especially it's our new year. So that's the. Yeah. How did you, how did you spend the new year? So New Year, uh, I, um, I was just with my mother and sister and my husband. So we were four of us and we don't see anyone. So oh. we are kind of in, uh, yeah. That's super weird. I had my first uh, Zoom party, like Zoom birthday party. So that's, oh. you know, well, the hugging is something that I miss too, you know. In, uh, yeah, in you in know, Europe, you, we hug we, a lot. So yeah i know iranians we are touchy too and it's very weird and you know the social distance i hate it and but it's the reality now and for sometimes we have to you know um keep the distance but you know i'm 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 imagining what's gonna happen after corona is gone <laughs> oh yeah that, <laughs> everywhere that would probably be a major shift you know, exactly. after yeah, after two weeks, I already, when I observe people in the street, I almost don't go out. So I basically freak out whenever I go out. And uh, yesterday I had to uh, um, take some delivery from the post office. And, you know, people were really like, oh, there's a, like a potential danger coming in. So it was really, yeah. really weird. Yeah. Imagine after yeah, two people months. People are very scared. Yeah, people are very scared, and and especially um, they are getting more uh, conscious about you know like it's it's not a joke. Uh, corona is not a joke, and especially we, the younger generation, we have to be careful. You know what's gonna happen to our parents. You know that's the problem because I'm sure yeah. many of us we got it, or if we get it, we will pass. Uh, you know uh the 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 sickness uh without you know going to hospitals but our parents because of their age age and or their conditions so we have to be worried about that but you know we'll see in iran we are opposite people are eight million people they went traveling because of the new year it's crazy i i mean and now they're saying when they're coming back the new catastrophe is going to start. So we are waiting for the 8 million who were traveling around Iran to go back to their home. And, you know, we have, uh, again, a um, new peak in Corona. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we didn't have to travel all around because, like, people in Poland were out anyways. Like, I mean, some people are in a lockdown, uh, but uh, from actually from today, you're not allowed to go out just like that. There is a fine. Oh. And so, okay, I mean, so you can go to the pharmacy, to the shop and um, to do some grocery. Yeah, grocery and things. Yeah. 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 So only like super necessary stuff that, that you have to do. So it's crazy. So how so do you feel? How do you feel being locked in? Because... For me, I kind of used to this kind of lifestyle. I'm, I, I don't go out a lot. I don't go to cafes, to restaurants. I have quite limited, uh, you know. <laughs> social um, life. And I, I chose, yeah, exactly, social love. And I chose Welcome to the club. So, Welcome to the club. I, or, you know, yeah, so, I you get know. anxiety so when I go to busy places and stuff. <laughs> exactly. So for me, it's not that difficult. But for my husband, he's going crazy. <laughs> he's very outgoing, and he loves 
to go to cafe to meet friends and restaurants yeah. and for him it's very uh, he's uh, he's very impatient now but um, yeah for you uh, you're also the same or you are yeah i'm not like uh like my social life is not like super crazy uh but like you know like the past few months have been so so busy and uh, I've been traveling quite a lot. It's a, such a pity that we didn't couldn't meet in Budapest. Um, yeah, I know. I couldn't come because of Corona. Yeah. So. And yeah. Uh, hopefully we didn't get the Corona over there. Uh, you didn't meet me. Um, <laughs> no, uh, if you would, you it, it would show the sign until now. Yeah, that's why I, I try not yeah. to meet anyone. Um, because, you know, as you said, yeah. like for maybe for our generation, it's slightly different than for the older generation. Uh, but you know, it's like I I don't I don't go out like crazy, but I have this crazy feeling of guilt that I actually I'm not out taking pictures, putting myself at risk. Actually, you know, and I felt so guilty uh, last night that I had the dream that I actually I started to travel in my dreams and. Uh, and I, of course, I'm dreaming that I'm taking pictures, but I'm actually not taking uh, real life. So I, I made, I tried to make a drawing uh, of some, some weird architecture that I dreamt of last night. I'll show it to you. This is it. It's like a talking building because I'm drawing uh, like a lot of talking buildings. It's like on this strange, like a wooden construction, yeah. some concrete brick construction. It's like this this building doesn't exist but uh i took a picture of it in my dream i mean not drawing and that's interesting and that was like but that's crazy because i'm feeling guilty of not being out and um, actually yeah. this, was my, yeah. this was my first question to you you know do you have some hiding space when you feel overwhelmed or tired or burnout and uh, do you have some space that you go and regenerate? It's maybe like a little bit of this selfish question for, from like, you know, one alcoholic to the other one. And uh, because I try to figure it out for myself, uh, yeah. how, do you, how do you regenerate? So that's a very interesting question uh, because uh, I found that I, I have anxiety since I'm a child. And because of the anxiety um, um, in my childhood, uh, I found a, a, a white cloud of above my head because I also grew up in a very busy family. We were four kids' parents, and my parents they always loved to host many guests and lunch and dinner. And um, and um, for me, uh, in a um, in a crowd. I get anxiety um, a lot, uh, and, and one of the things that I said I'm not bothered by, you know, being um, isolated and not going out um, is because of that. And um, I'm, I'm sensitive uh, about voices and uh, lots of energies, lots of people, you know, being under the same roof. Um, so from the childhood, I found that uh, space, which is a, a white cloud above my head, and I would always hide in that white cloud. So physically, I'm in a space where everyone is, but mentally and like I'm not there. I, I, can, I don't listen. Uh, I cannot hear people what they're saying because I'm in that zone where it's as if I'm in a bubble, I don't hear anything. I, I can give you an example, as if you are underwater. You see how you are so, you hear the movements and you a little bit feel what's going on, but you don't hear anything. You're, you know, kind of protected. So that's where I hide always. So is it like, uh, but is it permanently with you? So, you, so it just clicks or it is? It, it's like no, the, it, it, or... the moment no the moment i feel i'm getting stressed and i it's something is bothering me i hide uh, in that cloud above my head and it's very peaceful place and it's um it's it's where you know i i i think i guess i found many of my uh, you know peaceful kind of um state of mind uh, through the period of you know years
How long do you have to stay there to regenerate? Not that long. Mm -hmm. I go a lot during the day. During the day, I go there a lot, but I don't stay a long time. I don't stay a long time. So my mother, she always says, like, uh, among her kids, I was the most quiet one. And, um, and it was very interesting. I was, like, like sitting between them. But my mother, she would say, suddenly we would see you are uh, invisible. We don't see you anymore. And I guess it helped me a lot to my, uh, through my photography. So uh, when I go somewhere uh, and I spend time when I want to take portrait, I want to be, I want to be there, but also I don't want to be there. I want to be invisible. I, I don't want to send my energy out. I seek to my white cloud above my head. And then the person that I'm going to take portrait of, it gets like, because they feel the energy. They become calm and quiet, and then I calm down, and then I take my pictures. Mm -hmm. so, so the look series is uh, not actually your projection of on your friends from your uh, housing blog and, and stuff like that. It's like, it's them, right? Because they have this really common denominator, uh, which is like this stillness, calmness, and actually like being in this cloud. I don't know. I could feel that. Yes. I don't know, maybe this is my misreading of the, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the series. But no, no, it's not misreading. It's not me misreading. I believe, um, you know, uh, like, you know, through our career, we do different work. I started as a photojournalist, but then when I got older, I, I really thought I can never be objective about things. And I'm not a, a person who doesn't have ideas. When I work for newspaper, yes, I have to document and you cannot manipulate documentation because years later, what it stays is that moment where, where you document it. But of course, again, it's not, uh, you know, subject, it's not objective. It's not yeah. Yeah. because you could also, you know, see it from another angle. There are thousands of angles that you could uh, choose, you know, to take that moment. But I believe in documentation, especially in countries like Iran. And now the world is not only Iran, it's everywhere. And, um, and uh, it, it's, it's important. But every now and then I do a, a, a personal project, which is not a self-portrait, but it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reflection of me um, to my society. And also um, it's kind of a self-portrait. Yeah. So not that I use other people, but I kind of stick to find people who feel the same. Yeah. And I try to portray them. Totally, totally. Do you work on something now or you try to use the time for yourself? Actually, um, I'm, I'm doubting a lot these days because I think I did a project where I put my heart a lot there. Um, it's about PMS. I don't know if you're familiar with PMS. PMS, it's a, it's a state of mind and, uh, and the emotion and hormones, uh, um, premenstrual um, uh, syndrome. Um, okay. it's, um, um, it's a week or 10 days before women, they get their period. All right. And um, in those days, they become very emotional, sensitive. Um, they are very, um, they are very uh, inwards, but also they can feel everyone around them, feel the senses. They get, they have six sense. So it's amazing state of mind where women, they are there in that period of time. And normally it takes like three to four days. And I'm one of those women who have very uh, strong PMS and ask my husband about it. <laughs> and um, I decided to do a project about that because it's taking a lot of, of my time and how something that is really uh, affecting your life monthly, um, how could you could not talk about that. So, but it's such an abstract um, oh, yeah. feelings and uh, and. and you're frozen. You know, state okay. of mind. 
Exactly. For some years, I did uh, some research and I read a lot about that. And just one line, uh, it really uh, gave me the strength to start this project. It was a woman who was saying that um, when women, they get their uh, PMS, not period, their PMS, it's, uh, it's, it's the most creative period of their time in the month. So that really inspired me. And I start thinking, okay, I can make this, this abstract, you know, uh, feeling or things that I'm going with millions of women, you know, through, I can make something out of it. And so um, what, it took me three years to come up with something, really, literally three years. And um, then I, uh, one year, one year, and last December, I, uh, woke up and I had the feeling this is the time I should do my project. Mm -hmm. I start shooting. It's a video installation. I start shooting. I, I filmed my father, <clears throat> which became last time that I met my father because then he's, he died and I was not in Iran. And <clears throat> I filmed many things around me and then when my father passed away, I couldn't watch the film. Um, but some months ago, I thought I have to edit it. So now the edit is finished. I worked with a musician, uh, the sound artist, actually. Um, he did an amazing job. And uh, um, the, the subtitle is ready because it's kind of different. The, the visual is kind of, you know, because I have my uh, language when it comes to visual. I don't change, you know, my style from, you know, this day to other day or to different projects. I always keep the same uh, style. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's kind of different because it's really, um, I, I talk, um, um, it's a narrative and it's, it's my brain talking. So now it's finished and I'm thinking should I wait until like I can show it in a gallery or a museum or should I just put out there you know like have an opening where anyone can join you know online and show my yeah. video so I'm doubting what I should do I you know I think what this, do you like, think uh, I think like this uh, old traditional formats of exhibiting and everything uh, that we basically got used to uh, it's somehow changing now. It's, uh, yeah. and really, I think this would be one of the things that would uh, affect our societies. That, yeah, uh, yeah we, we are really a collective thing now. Different cultures, different places, time zones, etc. But we basically shared very much the same experience. And uh, I think uh, that, uh, you know, sharing is a great thing. And uh, if you feel you should, you should share it. And, uh, you know, because it's, it's a decision, uh, how, you know, how do you define that piece? You know, if you wanna, if you wanna make it uh, a comment uh, in the context uh, of uh, art piece or, um, you know, this traditional uh, work that could potentially function in the art world, or you just uh, use it as a like a social commentary, and you know it's. Uh, um, I yeah. don't know. I somehow <clears throat> feel to be honest uh... because you know it's so. Um, it's such a, you know, you share it with so many people, yeah. and it, as an experience with so many women, that you know I think it should be just out there. I know. Yeah, on the yeah. Other I hand, mean, it's in super Iran. Personal. Yes, it is. Um, um, it's personal and it's not because when my father yeah. died, I kept my distance to the project. So really, um, when I look at it, I don't see it's my work. Uh, so it was so personal, suddenly I, so distance. It's a weird feeling. But in Iran also, I didn't want to show it in a gallery. I wanted to show it in a public place. I yeah. wanted to rent a soule with no galleries, no you know foundation behind me because I paid for everything myself. So I thought like, you know, let's be free and let's not have all these people coming and getting something from you. Just show your work and anyone who's willing to come, you know, they can come and they can spend because it's like 25, six minutes. 
Oh, okay. Just be there 25, six minutes and then leave, you know, like a, a, see the video installation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's my latest project and we'll see. Maybe soon I put it out there. Maybe I'll wait. I don't know. But Oh, it yeah. sounds super interesting. Super interesting, especially something that is so invisible, so abstract and super hard to visualize. So it's a video piece. And it's a video yeah. piece and also picture. I'm hoping to make a pictures into a book. So I'll mix the uh, pictures with, you know, some ideas that I have. Um, it's a, but uh, uh, when I started to work on a book, uh, the Corona happened and, but I think I can start working again. And if I don't do assignment, but one thing you said about feeling guilty, I can tell you from another point of view, you know, I got assignment from National Geographic to shoot what is happening here. And uh, I went out at first. So I was in a self quarantine for two weeks. I was all by myself. My husband was in Holland. He was stuck. He could not come back. And I was here. And, and you know, it was quite interesting time to spend time with yourself and, you know, it's just you, you have no guilt. Nobody's waiting for you to deliver something. So it was as if everything is on pause. It was actually a, a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, time to be there. But um, then I got assignment for National Geographic and I was going out and then I would go to my mother to have lunch with her. And I also felt so guilty. Because my mother, she loves me and she could never tell me, don't come to my house. You went out to shoot. And I was going to like, you know, crazy places here in Tehran where people are still, you know, going out to do shopping before the new year. And then like the, the fire um, uh, kind of like army cleaning uh, the, the streets at middle of the night and this and that. So I was in touch with people who might be exposed to, you know, to Corona. And then I would go to my mother and my mother could not say anything. She was like, oh, you know, it's okay. If you get it, it's, I get it too. That's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And I felt so guilty. I felt so guilty, like how selfish I am that for my work and for something that it makes me happy, I'm active, I'm putting my family in danger. So, you Absolutely. know, it's, it's double feeling. So yeah. you should not feel guilty. Well, I, I feel Either guilty, way, but I don't go out. And I, you know, it's... Uh, you know, as, <laughs> it's an it's a, it's a, um, amazing Kierkegaard. I'm sure you know him, uh, mm -hmm. the philosopher. He's, he yeah. has a saying, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, um, a story, not story. I, I think you say in English, it's it's a saying. It says like, whatever you do, you regret. <laughs> At the end, this is the message: whatever you do, you, you regret. So don't regret. <laughs> <laughs> I don't regret, and I will be regretting that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Nusha, it was like really nice to uh, yeah see you, Shame like the for the first, first time. time we met was through Zoom, but you yeah. know, that's this a new is, this reality. Is a new, this yeah. is a new reality that we have to face, yeah. So, uh, hope to meet you in person. I mean, if yeah. the meetings yes. in person yes. will be allowed okay. in future. So, um, stay uh, stay safe and healthy. Don't you too, you Don't too. Don't you work too. too much. Uh, I'll try to do that for myself. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Have a, have so take care have of it was so nice talking to you uh, i mean hopefully this will be over soon but i believe post corona life it would not be the same no. and you never know maybe you know um maybe um not for better but you know for different kind of life so let's see yeah it will be different definitely so hopefully see you somewhere in the world soon. <laughs> or in the Zoom. In the Zoom, yeah. Oh, it's first time I'm in Zoom. It's nice. <laughs> uh -huh. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right? it's nice. It's a good yeah, quality. it's nice. Okay. I'm going to bug all my friends with Zoom. Take care. Bye-bye, Rafael. Bye, Nusha. Have a good day. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope still that everyone is safe and healthy. 
And thank you to Rafael and Nusha for the very beautiful conversation. Uh, so this is a second love dream. This photographer will ask the questions. Stuart Franklin. And this will, this photographer will answer. Mark Power. Good luck. <laughs> 